This is how you can make a server list command for your discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any other video on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. You can also get any of these four bot packages. They are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic, and we have introduced this brand new music package. It is a fully functional discord music bot that you can download and purchase if you'd like all of this will be in the description below if you're interested and with that let's go ahead and get into the code so to start we're going to go over to other or we could do moderation i'm going to do other and i'm going to go ahead and create server list.js within this let's go ahead and do const and we're going to get our slash command builder we can get our embed builder we're going to get our action row builder we can get our button builder and we can get our button style then we're going to go ahead and set that equal to require discord.js next we're gonna do module.exports. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna do owner to true. So that is a command I have in my interaction create. I believe I made a video on it. Um, if you don't have this, which I'm assuming you probably don't, just make a logical statement to check if the owner of the bot, so your ID is the user executing it. It's pretty simple to do. Then we can go ahead and do data and we're gonna get our new slash command builder. We're gonna go ahead and set a name, which is going to be server list. And we can go ahead and set a description and that is going to be get a list of all the servers the bot is in. Then we can add a comma and we're gonna do async executes. So we can go ahead and get our interaction and our clients. We can open this up. We're gonna start by deferring a reply. So we can do interaction .defer reply. We're gonna go ahead and set informal on that to true. Then we're gonna go ahead and do async function send message. And we're gonna go ahead and get our message parameter and we're also gonna get our key and we can open this up. We're gonna do const embed equals new embed builder. And we can go ahead and set a color. I'm gonna go ahead and make this blurple. And then we're gonna go ahead and set a description to our message parameter. And then we can go ahead and send this. But first we're gonna make a logical statement. We're going to say if key, we can open this up. We're going to do const button and we can do equals new action row builder. We can add some components, which is going to be our new and we can do button builder. We're going to go ahead and set our style to button style dot link. We can set our URL and this is going to be HTTPS. We can go ahead and do source dot and then we can do bin just like that. It's going to look kind of confusing, but that's what you're going to do. And then we're going to do slash and we can go ahead and get our key. So after we do that, we're going to go ahead and set our label down below. And I'm going to go ahead and get a link emoji and we can just go ahead and say server list. So after we do that, we can add a semicolon and now we can actually send this. So we can do await interaction and we can do dot edit reply. We're going to go ahead and get our embeds, which is going to be our embed. We can also go ahead and get our components, which is going to be our button component. So after we do that, we can actually go ahead and complete this logical statement. So we're going to say else. Now we can do wait interaction to edit reply and we can get our embeds, which is going to be our embed. So that's basically checking to see if we provided our key parameters so that we can use this send message function in other places. So now we can do var contents equals and we're going to do client dot user dot username. We can do s and then we can go ahead and say server list and we're going to do two backslash ends here. So we can format this within the source pin we're going to go ahead and create. So then we're going to go ahead and do var guilds equals await client.guilds.fetch. Then we're going to go ahead and do wait guilds and we can do the for each and we're going to go ahead and do async guilds and we can open this up. So within this, we're going to go ahead and do contents and we can do plus equals. We're going to go ahead and get our server and that's going to be our guild.name and we can get our ID, which is going to be our guild.id and then we can do a backslash n just like that. Now that we have all of that formatted, we're gonna go ahead and do contents and we can do plus equals. And we can say, if your bot is in more than 200 plus guilds, you will only see, and we can do the approximation sign, we can do 200 of them within this list. Now, the reason for that is because within the for each, we're only getting about 200 guilds, which is kind of unfortunate for the system. But when I was testing it in my bigger bots with over a thousand guilds, it only returned 200 of them each time, which is pretty unfortunate, but it's fine because we'll be getting the general amounts and it's going to show a lot of information anyways. So I don't think it will really matter too much, but I thought I'd just add that message in anyways. Let me do var list bin equals await and we can do fetch. We're going to do HTTPS and we can go ahead and get our source and we can go ahead and do B and then we can do the IN slash API and then we can do slash bins and we can do a comma. We're going to open this up within this. We're going to go ahead and get our method, which is going to be posts with a comma. And then we're going to get headers, which is going to be content type. And then we're going to do application slash JSON. We can do a comma, which is going to be body JSON to stringify. We're going to get our files and that is going to be our content. 
So it's going to look exactly like that. Feel free to pause the video and copy all of that down. Now we can do if and we can do list bin and we can do dot OK. Then we're going to go ahead and do var key. And we're actually going to get this just like that. So we can do var key equals our wait list bin. We can do dot JSON and just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and send the message. So we can do wait send message. So we're going to use that send message function we created above. I'm going to go ahead and get that globe emoji that we usually use. We can do my server list. And we can go ahead and do backslash n backslash n. We can say I am currently in and we can do backslash tick. We're going to get client dot guilds dot cache dot size. We do backslash tick. And we can say servers. I have compiled this list into a source bin below consisting of the server names and IDs just like that. Then we can do a comma and we're going to go ahead and pass in that key variable. So now we have that send message. Let's go ahead and say else and we can do wait send message. We're going to go ahead and get our error. So we can do the caution emoji and we're going to go ahead and say failed to load server list. So that's just in case for some reason the bin did not create. We have to send an error saying we could not create the server list. So with that, we're actually done with this entire command. So let's go ahead and restart the bot and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord server, let's go ahead and test this out. Now, I want to mention that the reason we're using source bins is we cannot fit 200 plus guilds within one embed. There is a character limit, so it actually makes it way easier if we just compile it all into a source bin. So let's just go ahead and do server list and we can go ahead and send it. As you can see, it's going to go ahead and think using our defer reply for a couple of seconds. And then it should go ahead and create our source bin. So now, as you can see, it's going to go ahead and say I'm currently in and it's going to say nine servers. And this is going to give us all that information. So let's actually go ahead and click open the server list. So over here, we're going to go ahead and get our server list. And it's going to go ahead and say the bots server list with the servers name and the servers ID. So this is all of the servers that the bot is in. Um, now some of them, I don't even know how I got in there, but that is th how this system works. It's pretty cool how this actually works. It sends all of these servers that it can compile within the source bin so that we can access it. So let's say you had a thousand guilds. It would send around 200 of them and I'm making a bunch of white space here, but it would essentially fill up this entire source bin with a bunch of servers, which is pretty cool. Now, this is a pretty useful feature for developers who need to list all of the servers and IDs. I wish I had this command when I was verifying my bots because I did get the inorganic growth error and I had to get all the servers and leave a couple of them. Um, and this would make it so much easier to do so. You could also add some more information to this instead of just the name and the ID. For example, the invite, the owner, the member count, really anything you would like. This is 100% customizable. So thus you can create an advanced serverless command for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.